Hello, everyone, and welcome to the World Science Festival Brisbane 2022, The Curious World of Physics. I'm Bernie Hobbs, and I'm super excited to be here with you today for this one-hour jam-packed session of physics, experiments, demonstrations, quantum craziness, and everything else that you can imagine, plus a bit of gravity thrown in as well. We are so sorry that we can't be here with you in person, but floods, pandemics, what are you going to do? Uh, we're doing doing the best that we absolute can. Um, so really wrapped to have you joining us from school, from home, online, wherever you are. And we also have some special guests joining us from the Shanghai Experimental School. So I'll get my three genius scientists and my genius co-host, Dr. Rob, say, ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao. Hello to everyone else. Um, before we get started, before I introduce our legendary guests, I do just want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we're celebrating science on today, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. And I also want to pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and just acknowledge the ongoing role that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have with our country. And that kind of connection to country is what drives a lot of our science as well. So let's get cracking with meeting some scientists. And when I said gun scientists. I'm talking about absolute freaking legends. We have got two quantum scientists and one, oh, astrophysicist. <laughs> so um, I'm going to start quickly by introducing Dr. Jacinda Gingdis, who is a quantum physicist um, who's, okay, this, you know how they say quantum physics is weird and there's always these different particles being discovered? Jacinda is working out the rules that say whether a particle is allowed or not. So she's kind of like the god of quantum physics, what's allowed. So Large Hadron Collider people are trying to do all this stuff and she's going, not possible, not possible, not allowed, and got a whole lot of other experimentalists. So Jacinda, you're a theoretical physicist at UQ. Legend, and we're going to come back to you just shortly, um, Dr Tamara Davis, I'm sure you already know from such TV shows as Brian Cox on everything, um, <laughs> The Sky Tonight, and uh, lots of episodes of Catalyst. Um, Tam, as you know, is a fantastic explainer of everything galactic, and today she'll be focusing mainly on gravity, mm -hmm. our friend gravity. Um, you may know um, Jack Romero, or you may not, but you will after today because Jack is a quantum physicist who's working on helping the development of quantum computing applications. So working out how we can send information with photons of light. So Jack's going to be talking about photons and light. Um, Jacinda's going to be talking about atoms and the energy in atoms. And we're going to start right now with Tam Davis, who's going to be talking about gravity. But did I introduce Dr. Rob Bell, who's a, he's just going to be here taking over the show whenever things get really tricky or messy, because this is one of my favourite shirts. So we're just no, that's fine, there. sure. Okay. All right. So I think I said I'm Bernie Hobbs, but let's get over to Tamara Davies. We'll give you some space. Yeah, physicists, assume your positions. Now, okay. Tamara, gravity, I think it's a good idea we start with that because it's more familiar to us than a whole lot of quantum uh -huh. physics. So and what do you got? What better way to just describe gravity than to drop heavy things? Okay. So Bring down the bowling ball. <laughs> okay, I did not know you were about to drop a bowling ball right near me, but thank you. Yeah. Yes, yes, thank you. So this one needs to go to, yeah, about here. And we're going to use this to demonstrate energy. Mm -hmm. So when something, there's a couple of different types of energy and the and an energy is conserved. It always stays the same. So if I... like I'm stepping back yeah, at this stage. It's probably yeah. wise. <laughs> um, if I hold something up here, it has a lot of potential for movement. It's not moving, but it has a lot of potential energy. And that's because gravity is pulling on because it. Because gravity, if I let this go, what's going to happen? <laughs> gravity is going to make it go like this. Yeah. Once I let it go, it's going to go down here. It's going to pick up a lot of speed. So it's going to go fast down here. And at this point, it has lots of kinetic energy. It'll be moving fast. Moving and then energy. it'll go slow and stop, and it'll have potential energy again up here. Go down, it'll go fast, have kinetic energy, and stop, and have potential energy up here again. All right. Now, the thing is, con conservation of energy means energy is neither created nor destroyed. And so that means if I hold it up to my face up here... Right and let it go, it should swing back to exactly the same place. Let's hope you don't move forward and smash in that gorgeous yeah. so wash of yours. We're going we're gonna to, like, you know, I'm going to risk my teeth and we'll see how <laughs> this goes. Um, but I trust physics. Do you yeah. trust physics? Well, I hope you do because you yeah. won't have many jobs on camera with a smashed face, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's going to come back basically to exactly okay. the same place. Ready? Let's see if Ready, physics is two, telling the truth. One. <laughs> 
Fast, oh, baby, so, no, potential baby. fast kinetic energy. Oh, <laughs> nice. Should we do it one more time? Because yep. you've always got to repeat an experiment. Okay, yeah, lots of potential energy. Of, and I've got to make sure I don't actually accidentally push it because then that... Oh, no, that wouldn't be the end of just your Just got to let it go, ready? Yeah, just let it go, Tam, let it go. Potential energy becomes high kinetic energy becomes potential energy. High kinetic energy becomes safe as yeah. houses. All right, so... So we're going to come back to gravity a yeah. little bit later um, because this kind, same kind of exchange of energies helps comets move around the solar system and the, and the planets move and oh, that kind of stuff. You just can't help. Any chance to get some astrophysics yeah, in there so and you're ready. We're going to get back to <laughs> that. But what's really great is you've got us talking about energy mm -hmm. and I know that that's what Dr Rob and Dr Jacinda are going to talk about but at a very different level, yes. not bowling balls. Oh, you've got such power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're going to be talking energy and atoms. Yeah. So over to you guys. Yes. Right, yes, energy and atoms and a bunch of cool stuff on the table here, which we're going to find out about <laughs> cool shortly, I'm sure. and very warm stuff as well. And Ooh. so I'd like to start, actually, by setting a few things on fire. Oh, what better way to start? <laughs> Set some things on fire, Oops. I like that. So we have some molecular salts here. Okay. And the question for you guys, really, is why we'll see that they look distinct from each other, and we're going to wonder why Why are they different? What is the reason behind this? We're adding a bit of flammability to them at the moment. We've got methanol that we're, being, that we're adding. Uh, yep. I have to say I right now, enough. it just looks like a lot of wet salt. So we've got big expectations okay. for what's coming. There should be a lighter somewhere. Oh, a lighter. Somewhere. I've seen a lighter. Lighter there. We've got enough salts. Thank you. Can we dim the lights? Oh, yep, that one's a light. Ooh. So it's quite a transparent flame, I guess, for oh. this methanol. But, oh, look at the colours in there. Wow. Different, different colours. Green, yeah. red, a bit of blue maybe over there. It's quite a show, isn't it? It's red. Yeah. The red is really strong. Yeah. Can anybody oh, say now why they think that these colours, why these flames have different colours? Well, yeah. it's got something to do with those salts, clearly. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> but to understand that... In more detail, um, let's go on and delve into the atom. So here we've got on the screen like a schematic diagram of an atom. It's just a, a cartoon. An atom doesn't really look quite like quite that. Like it's that. not sure, that right. size. Yep. Um, so does anybody know, do you know what, what, how big an atom actually is? I know they're very, 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 very they small. They are very, very small. Um, but no, not really. So here you have got about one, this is about one centimetre, and an atom is about 100 million times smaller than this. So they it's are really small. very, very small, but we know that they're very important objects and they make up um, everything around us here in this room and they make up you and they make up me and, and all of you there in the audience. Um, and so the atom's really very small. Here we have a picture of like the electrons. We know that the atom is um, made up of electrons that are whizzing around at really so high speeds. Those are the speeds. white streaks kind of all around the that outside. Is, that is what, yep. what that's depicting there. Yep. And in the really heavy atoms, they're going even as fast as the speed of light. Oh, wow. So they're really very, very, yeah, very fast. Now, I should point out as well that we didn't know that they had all this structure in them. And so it was only about 125 years ago that it was discovered that there are, that there are electrons in atoms. So the word atom itself actually comes from the Greek word atomos and it means uncuttable or indivisible. So and you think it was just a, just a, a ball just kind a of thing, of it's just a lump of stuff, exactly. didn't know there was all that structure in there. Yeah, that's, that's right. Um, and it has been, of course, huge fascination for, you know, for people for thousands of years and now, you know, what is really the fundamental particles of nature? Which particles are there that you can't divide up further? And this kind of brings me now to this lump of stuff in the middle there. Do you know what that is called? Uh, that would be the nucleus, that the middle. That is right, so that is the nucleus. And inside that nucleus, um, we have um, protons and neutrons, and these are actually not the fundamental particles either. We know now that they are made up of particles, particles called quarks, so there's three quarks in each of these nucleus. And so how did we find this out? I mean, is if, if you want to find out what something's made of, usually you pull it apart. How do you pull apart an atom? <laughs> Well, people like to smash things together oh, so at very high energies <laughs> and, then, and then see what comes out. Oh, so you just sort of run a couple of atoms together and then just see uh, what's yes, left? Yes, these are the sorts of things that you can do. Cool. For sure. All right, love it. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so we should move on, but I just wanted to point out that this nucleus is so much smaller, actually, than the atom itself. It's about 100,000 times smaller than the atom. So there's a lot of space there, mm. and yet, obviously, this plays a very big role in our lives. And so here we have ah, a periodic I've table, which before. I think many of you have seen before. Um, and then, you know, every one of these atoms is distinct. We've now, um, you know, we've got uh, 118 atoms that, have e that are either naturally occurring or have been produced in the lab. 
And um, each one of these yeah, has its own special identity and they're all organised in this periodic table mm -hmm. according to their structure. And does the, the, the colours, does that mean something? Are they sort of like the ones of the same colour? Yes, so these sort of do um, represent the different sorts of um, atoms that, that you have. Yes, so they have the ones that are coloured in the same way have the same sorts of properties. OK, so what we want to do is understand now a little bit more about um, atoms and their structure. So I'd like to bring up a couple of A couple of volunteers. volunteers. Yes. Come on down, volunteers. Let me... I'm a volunteer too, sir. <laughs> what, what's your name, young man? My name's Bernie and I volunteer to be an electron. All right, excellent. Very good. And your name? My name is Coden. Coden and... Shafali. Shafali. I don't know why I'm doing that because I've got a microphone on. But anyway. <laughs> All right. Coden, Shafali. Uh, oh, and you need a ladder as well, yes, don't we you? Yes, we need the ladder. Yeah, so right. I'll, I'll hold you. this pointless microphone in front of myself. While we're doing that, do you guys want to say hello? I see you both from um, Beanley High School, yeah? Yep. Should we give a shout out to Beanley High? <laughs> yeah, I know. Hello, we're on telly. Sorry, yeah. Bernie, can I just pop this? <laughs> yep, sorry. There we go. Uh, we Madam go. Electron, thanks. There you go. Yep. All right. Okay, so who's the electron? I'm Bernie? the electron. Okay. All right. So this oh, is going to no. be... Our... I totally lied. Shivali's the electron. All right. So we're imagining <laughs> that this is the atomic energy Sorry, levels Shavali. of an atom, okay? And so each of those rungs on the ladder represents an energy level. And we're going to have... So the nucleus would be right We're going to have the nucleus here. way down there yeah. and other electrons can be way down there on the carpet level. And this is going to be the most, uh, the outermost electron. It's going to be sitting on the lower rung here, which we're going to call, call it the ground state. It's the lowest energy state. And when we add energy to the atom, the easiest thing for it to do is for the outermost electron to jump to a higher energy level. And so we're going to go and add I'm energy. I'm going to add some, some energy to the atom. Are you ready the for atom? the energy, Shivali? So, and so this electron jumps up. And you see that, it's, that it comes to just one of the rungs. It can't jump up to a space in between. And this is called the discretization of the energy levels or the quantization of energy. And so this is a property of atoms and it comes about due to quantum mechanics. It can only be at one of those places, nowhere else. Nowhere else. So unlike the bowling ball, when you give it energy, you can push it just up anywhere. But this can only go to certain That's spots. right. That's absolutely right. And so now it doesn't like to stay in this highly energetic state. It's a sort of lazy kind of object like <laughs> many of us. And it wants to drop down into its ground state, its lower level. To so relax. Then, exactly. So then can we just show how this, how this drops down? And what happens to all that energy? Exactly. Uh, well, Tamara was just discussing this earlier. So it has to go somewhere, doesn't it? Because we have the cons conservation of energy um, and so it's it's being emitted and it'll be emitted in the form of radiation that's our cue and that's our cue light, waves. light light <laughs> waves and so these light light has wave properties and yep. so we're going to be wave like properties include frequency and wavelength so we're talking about frequency that means that the wave is sort of um, one part of the wave is coming up and down you know faster so we increase the frequency increase the frequency and then we decrease it decrease and so on okay and what we want to understand it's is harder to have a high frequency <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is very it is exactly so what we want to understand now yeah is if we're doing it really really fast this requires more energy and this corresponds to a higher frequency yeah energy. don't be such a slacker <laughs> <laughs> high energy frequency yeah <laughs> And so this works, it works this way also with light. And so when we have this, let's, let's do this again. Let's put some energy into... OK, more some energy. energy into the you ready, atom. Shivali? It goes massive up to energy. a higher level. Oh, right oh, up there. Oh, that is so okay. massive. Now it's going to drop yeah. down. OK, and that's quite a lot of... High energy. High energy <laughs> corresponds to high frequency. And let's do another one with low energy. Yes, low please. energy. Just a little bit of energy being added. Let's energize it again. And then oh. it drops down and it has less energy oh, and okay less that's all right that's, yeah, that's more like it okay friday afternoon that's great Field. yeah <laughs> thank you guys i think we've got that point across all right we're gonna energy and frequency and only certain amounts of energy possible yes that's right shivali and coda and legend you you'll be back though so we'll see you I'll later too far. <laughs> I'll just you want me to take that ladder thank you cheers um, i got skills too you know yeah <laughs> So now we want to explore a little bit more about wave properties. We want to see how uh, frequency is related to wavelength. All right, cause we, so we were talking yeah. a little bit about frequency and wavelength there, but how do they go yes. together and how can we show this? Yeah, exactly. We could just use a rope, but actually we're going to do something a little bit more exciting. Sure. There are all sorts of different waves out there and they all have this property of the relationship between wa with wavelength and frequency. We're going to come here and we're going to use something called a Rubens tube. And can I ask Ben from the UQ demo troupe to come and help us? Thank you, Ben. So Ben's lighting something. This is looking very exciting already. And I think we've got to take this away from the end oh, yes, when yep. we ignite it. So we're going to be using sound waves, presumably, because we've got a speaker. 
<laughs> Indeed. So we're wow. going to be using sound waves for this experiment, and we're going to be pushing. We're going to be putting Ooh. the sound waves against the end of this tube. <laughs> the end of this tube, mm. which has a membrane on it, it's actually a balloon that's just stretched, and that will vibrate. Oh, look, look at that. Exactly. So when I when I touch the membrane on the end, that just pushes the gas in there, makes a little it bit does. of pressure or something. So it okay. makes makes um yeah the pressure um yeah. Oh. So we have points of pressure where there's higher points of higher pressure and lower pressure. So now we want the speaker to go against that, do we? Yep. Let's see if I can line that up for you. And the flame's coming quite close to the. Okay. Yeah. Light. We don't want to burn the laptop. That's no, we don't. Not at this point. <laughs> All right, that looks Can we come good. and have a look? This so we're going to like go and fun. send yeah, the yeah. sound waves through the tube and the wave is going to reflect from the end and this interference is going to set up what we call standing waves. So the sound wave will go down the tube through the gas that's currently yes, burning. Yes, yes, and, and cause pressure waves. Whoa, whoa, whoa. it's happening already. Whoa, look out. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. So is this one... So the flames are very different heights now. I can certainly see that. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit so okay, you can yep. see that clearly. Tame are we down. seeing the wave-like pattern here? Oh, yeah, so it's a little bit. So we've got a peak here and a peak there, so the right. two peaks. Yep. OK, all right, so we're going to change that now. Just think yep. about that. So we, we're putting a particular pitch through there at this moment, and we're going to change the pitch. We're going to double Whoa. it. Whoa. That was middle C, and now we've got high C. Oh, yeah, peak, now peak, what do peak, we peak. see is going on? So are there more peaks? Yep, or definitely. I mean, are there more waves fitting into yep. that space? Yep. OK, so what's happening? We put higher pitch. So I high... can't hear you, Dr. And Jacinda! Sorry. <laughs> the higher pitch is connected to the higher frequency. We know that, right? Yeah. So the higher sound is higher frequency, and that means are the wavelengths shorter or longer? You guys have to be shorter to fit They're in, shorter. don't you? They're shorter than to fit in, so that's right. So the higher the frequency, um, the lower the... And when you... Shorter the wavelength. When you doubled the frequency... It doubled the number of waves as That's well, right. so we could see four instead of two. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So they they're related. It's fantastic. Inversely. Yeah. And so we have something here. We've got heat waves for you um, on display, and there happens to be a very popular song called Heat Waves. That there is. There is. So we thought we might just show you how this um, apparatus uh, dances along to that music. So Great let's let's play that of for art you and now. Science. Oh, look, it's dancing. Oh no, I'm here. I have to dance. <laughs> Um, I like the tune, but the waves are... Whoa! <laughs> okay, I could see flames. I could see something going So they don't like the bass so much. Oh, well. thanks for <laughs> We have to... Oh, we've set <laughs> our speaker on fire. Yeah, hooray! That music was hot. It, yeah. it was very hot, so hot that oh. we nearly set the stage uh, yeah, on fire. some heat waves. It's true, gaffer tape is flammable. <laughs> <laughs> We've learned a valuable lesson. <laughs> OK. That so was that, awesome. That was great. Awesome. Yeah, it was. And so we noticed that the waves here were a little bit messy, weren't they, in this case? Yeah. And, and I think, do you understand why, why this would be? Well, so when you play the music, I guess you just don't have one note. You've got a bunch of different notes. Yeah, so that's exactly, oh, this is exactly yes. the reason. This is exactly the reason. And so I hope you enjoyed that. And now, we're, now that we've understood this relationship between um, colour, well... Uh, of pitch and and frequency oh, and, yep. and wavelength. We're now going to look at light, and in fact, light is connected. The colour of light is connected to wavelength, and so we're going to go and see how this all comes back to our ladder and our flames at the beginning that, that, that we showed you. Oh, the colourful flames, right? Yes, yes, exactly. yes, yes. All right. So, could I please have a couple of volunteers oh, come forward? Because we have yes, some special yes. glasses for all of you and those who come are watching down. in the schools nearby. We do have some glasses that can go go with you to the school, so you can have a look through these places. Should we all come and there. have a look as we well? Should. We should. Can everybody, out everybody on come? Now, I should introduce it. So we've got Rory and Jack, is that correct? Do we have, yes. do we have yeah, more? Yeah. Okay. Jack. Really? Okay. Jack and Rory. Brilliant. Um, come on forwards, Jack and Rory. Come on forwards with your funky glasses. <laughs> okay, so these are glasses. really right. special glasses. Yeah, you have it, Rob. Oh. What Thanks. makes them special is they have a lot of grooves in them. So they have so many lines. They have 13,500 lines per inch, so across one of these little eyepieces. And so what this does, let's just have a little look at the white lights over here and see what's <laughs> happening. What do you see? I see a 1970s film clip from Queen <laughs> called that Bohemian is Rhapsody. Amazing. Okay, so we... We see that rainbows. The, the, exactly. Yeah. So we see the rainbows. In fact, I would be turning to the lights here. It's sort of the back of the room, but I think that oh, one works wow. better for me right. anyway. Oh, I feel like we're totally ripping off everyone at home, yeah, you but you don't have to miss out because we've made a special one of these for the camera as well. So mm. check it out. Can <laughs> you see what's happening to the lights now? Experience the joy. And so and this is like yeah. passing light through a prism. So what's happening is that it's splitting up the components of the wavelengths. 
And so which light do we see furthest away from the object that we're looking at? The red. The red. The red so that's light. right. So the red, the red light is further away. And this corresponds, as Tamara would know, to the longer or the shorter wavelengths. The longer the wavelengths. Lo are yeah, the longer wavelengths. <laughs> are you testing each other? That's <laughs> <a good idea. laughs> she passed a professor off. Yeah. <laughs> um, OK, so now that we've got that, let's have a little look at some um, atomic gases that I've got. And I'd like you to tell me which atomic gases they correspond to. Okay. They're clearly labelled. Because <laughs> they, they are indeed. Come around, come around the back, boys. We'll, uh... I'll jump in as well, because, you know, I hate to miss out. So will okay, we need we our dim... funky glasses for we this? We will, yes. Okay. Can we please dim the lights? So before we were looking at basically white lights and seeing a rainbow, I suppose, because all those colours are mixed up in white light. Exactly. So these all are not of white the lights, contributions, I presume. All of the, the, the colours of the rainbow contribute to white light. And now, um, let's have a little look. Wow. So it looks red without Is that the, safe uh, to look at with It looks just red. Yes, yeah. it's very safe okay. to look at. OK, with the specs. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. No more rainbow, no. OK. So we're seeing... Uh, and I... Th Mm -hmm. In the middle, it just looks red, but then as we go further out, there's green and yellow and orange and red. What do you, what do you see there? It's Rob? almost like a sunset of red, yellow and orange and green. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But as it spreads out. You're getting Sometimes the same kind of thing? Uh, yeah, definitely. There's just some, some green at the back sort of thing. Yeah, exactly what Rory said, like a sunset. Yeah. And do you see it looks clear as you look further away from the main sort of object? Because it's repeated. Yeah, they're like oh, coloured yeah. barcodes. I don't know, can you see that at home? With the, the thing up against, yeah, okay. <laughs> the diffraction right. gradient, I hope so. All right, so what we're going to do is turn that off now and we're going to have a little look at our emission spectrum. So this is telling us, basically, this, these are kind of like detective glasses that are telling us exactly which atom we're looking at. What did you see then from this tube? Do you remember the colours you saw? It was a red, an orange, a yellow and a small bit of green. Red, orange, yellow. Can you see any there that are red, orange, yellow and a small um, bit of green? Gas neon includes a lot of those. And that's absolutely right. So oh, that was a tube of neon. Well done. So that was a neon light. I know you don't that do that either. That was a neon light. <laughs> that was a neon light. Now we're that's running a bit a bit short, so we're only going to have time to look at that one now. But that was okay. fantastic. So different right. gases have different fingerprints. Yes, they do. So they have absolutely different fingerprints. So because they've got like a different ladder for their electrons. Yes. So energy. what we're seeing is the energy that's being taken away by the light or the photons when it drops down from a higher energy level to a lower energy level level, just as we saw with the ladder. And so because atoms have different spacings for their energy levels, they're going to have um, different wavelengths connected to the light that oh. takes this away. And this is all shown on the spectra. Beautiful. Different colours. And, and so this all relates back exactly to the different coloured um, flames that we saw earlier. Where we started. Exactly. So the different different salts in there were exciting to different levels, different yes. steps. Yes, so this is basically showing you what the spectra of the molecular salts is. You're really looking at the, um, the fundamental spectra. And if you even put one of these glasses on while looking at it, you could even split that up into the, the most dominant wavelengths that are contributing to that. And could we keep these glasses, Dr Jacinda? I'll let you keep those. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're actually going to send them out to everyone who registered to wash as well. So you're not missing out at home. Don't worry. Yes, Brilliant. Is that... Any more from Dr Jacinda? No, I think that's uh, it you from this. Thank stuff? you. Sorry? You well, thank you very stuff? much, boys. Yeah, I'm going to levitate something. We'll need you again. One more. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks, Rory. Yes. Thanks, Jack. I'll keep mine on too, just in case I need OK, them. so we have one more experiment oh. here. Sorry. Yep, I still need <laughs> you. Yep. Um, we can probably move some of these things yep, out of the way. Let me get some things out of your way. Um, while we're getting those last couple of things sorted, I did have a quick question. Um, with light having different fingerprints, when you look at light from distant stars, for example, or even close stars, does that light tell you something about what's around those stars? Like the hydrogen and helium, I guess, is in, in the sun, so we must get those spectral lines coming through. Does yes, that... So that, that is exactly what happens. And even Tamara probably could tell you a little bit more about that. <laughs> and you see, we'll see the emission lines, you'll see absorption lines as well. So, um... so it's kind of what we know, how we know what's out in the galaxy without actually having to visit it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is. And exactly. Tamara, That's the tool, tool that I use all the time oh, well, to be able go. to observe <laughs> galaxies. So we take spectra of galaxies, we figure out how fast they're moving away. We can tell what elements are in there that make up them because, as Jacinda well knows, the, elect the atoms in the distant universe are the same type of things as the atoms that we have here on Earth. And we can observe, so by observing all of those different colours in minute detail, we can tell a huge amount about the galaxies very, very far away. And so do the colours also change when they're moving away, like the 
speed yeah. changes the colour. Exactly. It will shift right, to the red if it's moving away. <laughs> it's a very useful so thing to use. It shifts a bit to the red. All right, yeah. but someone said yeah. something about levitating. I just that I oh, all right. Yeah. Tell you about GPS. Do we have time for nope. that? Or don't worry don't. about the GPS. So let's just move straight to. But we have a couple of um, bubbling, boiling cups here. What we is do. in there? So this is liquid nitrogen here, and it boils away at a very low temperature. This is very cold. Okay. Bernie knows what this temperature Minus is. Minus 196 degrees Celsius. Thanks, Thank Bernie. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, my job description, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have some what's called superconductors in here, and we've got very we've got very strong magnets here that are arranged into a track. And I'm going to put this uh, needs to cool down a little bit further. So when we cool this material, what's happening is that um, the electrons inside sort of pair up. In a, in a quantum mechanical way, they pair up and they're able to be transported through the material um, with, all, with basically with no resistance at all. And what this does is produce big currents and it expels the magnetic fields that could be coming through this space. So it expels magnetic fields and it causes it to levitate. Ooh. So it's not attracted, it's not repelled, it's expelled. Yes, it is. Huh. But there's something else going on here too, and we have huh. some defects inside this material. They're supposed to be there, though. These right. defects purposeful allow defects. Yeah, purposeful <laughs> like ones, and they allow magnetic flux lines to come through inside. And this is a quantum mechanical effect that happens. Once these, they come through, they're actually locking it into position. It's wow. called quantum locking. So what you're able to see now is actually a macroscopic visual, macroscopic effect of quantum mechanics, which usually we can't access. No. Because quantum mechanics is what um, you. Know, Know, dictates the behaviour of small things, including atoms, but here we're able to, do, to see something oh, else. Warming up, I think this is a little bit too warm, so I'm going to move <laughs> to the other one, and I just want to show you something else. <coughs> so these superconductors only work when they're super cold? They do, yes, because uh -huh. otherwise it doesn't have that superconducting property And we're going to be excluded. This will have to be a super quick uh, extra thing second. as well. I think I need to turn that around. Just one second. I'm going to just wait a moment. OK. But what I would... <laughs> oh, another magnetic. <laughs> Tongs are magnetic. Let's, let's see if that has cooled down a little bit further now. So I can place it on here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin it. What happens if I turn this upside down? Is this just repelling it, do you think? And it's going to fall down? If it can was, it, it will. <laughs> so what's happened is overcome Whoa. gravity. So this is not just repelling. Oh, I've had a little accident. <laughs> you cannot do this with a normal magnet. No. This is really locking it in posi put into position, wow. the quantum locking effect. Fantastic. So Love it. We have just seen all about the energy in the different levels for the electron with the atom. We've seen waves and, and how frequency is related to energy. We've seen how colour is related to frequency and energy. We've seen how um, superconductors can exclude magnetic fields, which is just nuts, but um, also amazing to watch. And to be quantum locked. Uh, and sorry, quantum locked, not through just any old kind of, through their intentional defects, Intentionally. not just any old kind of, you know, malarkey going on there. Dr. Cinder, you rock. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, everybody. And now we're going to move from the energy levels of atoms to another property that's really important about atoms and light and all of our systems, and that's light. And um, Dr. Jack is really an expert in photonics or the science of light and photons. We saw a bit of very yes. groovy photon action yes. in one of those demonstrations. Yes, but I'm now, so excited to talk about my next favourite thing next yeah. to husband and kids. Next it's to husband and kids. Photons, photons, my yeah, favourite totally things. Understand. Yeah. Yes, so I'll talk about the different properties that photons have. And I'd like to start by showing you a picture of this. Who could guess yeah. what this picture is? Do you know what that is, Bernie? That is not a photon, Dr. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> that is, in fact, a dung beetle pushing a mound of poo. It is, in fact, a dung beetle pushing a mound of poo. And I want to talk about dung beetles because they actually have a superpower. Pushing dung. <laughs> well, in aside of poo. from that, they could also see polarization. So, who here has heard about polarization? Polarizing sunglasses. Yeah. Polarizing sunglasses, exactly. That's what you wear to remove the glare of the sunlight. And it actually makes your eyes cooler too because it's actually rejecting some of the light. And it's something to do with only letting light yes. come in one. Yes, so we'll, that's plane. what we'll go, we're going to demonstrate today right. with uh, some... A couple of happy volunteers. couple of happy volunteers. Like Shivani okay. and so Odin. This dung beetle in their eyes... You're they not have a dung beetle, OK? No, you just happen not. to walk on when she's talking about <laughs> dung beetles. So the dung beetles have something in their eyes, which are 
polarizers. We call them polarizers. And they're very powerful such that they could see polarization even in the moonlight. Right. Like bees are, you know, yesterday's superpower. Oh. They, they see polarization in sunlight. Yep. Dung beetles, they see it in moonlight. You are such a fan. Yeah, yes, I am beetles. such a fan of <laughs> dung beetles. And what they have in their eyes is called a polarizer. I'll demonstrate with our two volunteers here. So I'll just make you stand so just back be to back. The inside of the dung beetle's yes. eye. That's all we're asking right now. All okay. right. Okay. But before that, let's. I'll just hold this slinky with Bernie. Yeah. So this is a vertical polarization because light is a wave. It could vibrate on this plane. Yeah. It could also vibrate on another plane, which is this horizontal polarization. So it's just, you know, vibrating this way. Mm -hmm. So what we have in the dung beetle's eyes are polarizers, something like this. So see if the light is aligned yeah. with the polarizer, the light just it can pass goes through. through. It, it can, can pass, pass through. through. But what if now the light is not aligned with your polarizer? So, so what we've happens got a, is we've got a vertical polarizer, and now and we're then going we'll to have light, light, which is. Are you feeling <laughs> whacked yes. in the name of science? Yep, we is it hurting? Is we won't do hurting? it forever. But see how the energy on the other side is less oh, sorry. than what's coming out, out That was here. a bad experimentalist. Yes. I was, <laughs> so the wave only works on one side yeah, the, and The wave cannot through. pass through because the polarizer is not aligned with yeah. the polarization of the light yeah, that's it's coming. It's killing the light. It's and killing the light. And this is important because polarizing is one of the tricks that you use, one of the things you use to encode information yes, in exactly. light for our quantum computers. Exactly. And such. Do, are we finished with our... Delectable yes. volunteers yes, here. Thank you All very right, much thank you much for, for pretending to be polarizers. Right. I actually brought some real polarizers here, yeah. which I hope I could. So see, this is a so these screen. are like giant dung beetle eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. so, so see our screen, the light coming out of that is actually polarized. So you see how the letters ah, yep. just disappears. Yeah. Yeah. So it can. Oops. Oops, sorry. Yeah, I know it's hard. <laughs> yeah, if you have to actually, what yeah. do we do? Okay. Okay, so when you've got it there, it can come through in that plane. Oops, but then when you turn around, when you it turn all around, it disappears. Yeah. All okay, right. but if you go back and then. Okay, so see, it's, it's got. Okay, rotate it, Mary, and you'll see. Okay. A whole lot oh, there? of fingerprints. Okay, yep. yeah. All right. sorry, sorry. Okay. It's really hard to watch TV and do this as well. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, sorry. It's, <laughs> so it's just, you see this one's yep. blocking it. Yeah. But when I put another one here, yep. it could, it, it, it goes back because yep. it's like... Oh, unpolarizing yeah. it, correcting it and yeah. letting the stuff yeah. that didn't get through yes. come through. I've got you uh, at last. Okay, let's, yep. okay <laughs> let's leave it that way. So, All right, okay. So... Information in light, polarization, yeah. you did say we encode information in polarization, but even less exotic actually is so we see this every day. We see maybe we need the lights down a little yep. bit to see it more clearly. Okay, we see you see the color the color on the screen? Yeah. Yep. So every pixel in your monitor actually has three values the red, green and blue values. Mm -hmm. And depending on the value of those uh of those numbers, you could change the color. So this is information encoded in light, you know, right. very classically. Yeah. Right. So, so you just frequency just, combined just to give mixing a the colors, result. just yep. mixing the colors like that's how you watch your movies yep. on Netflix. Right. Like yep. every pixel there has those uh, mixing happening. So polarizing is one way and then color is another frequency, one. Color is another oh. way. Yeah. OK. And speaking of Netflix, which yep. is, you know, delivered by uh, our internet yes like i'll ask you to guess this next picture what this is bernie it's not a dung beetle that's it's all it's not I a can dung say. beetle it's, it's a very exciting picture okay um it's light it's no it's the internet cables those it, are in fact the internet cables. so that's the map of our undersea optical cables yes so really if, missing from the continent of australia the <laughs> yeah cables. i could see yeah. there's a bit less bit density yeah. in that right Let's corner there but we'll not failings. dwell on it no. yeah. <laughs> so this uh internet going through our fiber optic cables is another way that actually information is encoded in light and it gets delivered to our homes right. and i'd like to demonstrate that using uh, this demo here. Because the light travels inside yeah, it's like, the fiber. So here you we have need a someone picture. someone called, definitely, yep. uh, Rob. So we have a picture here of a fiber optic cable. 
And this one, it's really you imagine the photons, they're just bouncing along, zigzagging through that fiber optic cable. Um, through, it's called total internal reflection. Okay, go because it's. This. <laughs> yep, okay, we could do it. We could do it. That's it, the oh, cheering right. squad. That's it, that's okay. It. And then we have to put the bucket back. Yep. Yep. Um, I'll, be the, I'll be the bucket girl for this one. Yeah, you're okay. so not overqualified for that job. <laughs> All those degrees and yep. discoveries. Well, thank you. Chief oh, bucket right. girl. Get out of the way. And, okay, so uh, what would happen is I will... Do you want me to hold that one? When Tamara lifts okay, her finger, there will be some rhodomen, like, let's call it water. Yeah. yeah, okay. Water coming out, and that's going to be like our fiber optic cable. Okay, great. I'll shine some light. You ready? Onto that fiber. Are you ready? Are you ready, Tam? You've got to Do catch it. Do we have it. rags? Like it's not an <laughs> ultimate frisbee. I'm not Are sure if I'm going to be good at this, but <laughs> there might be a bit of mess. But Give we'll it a red hot go. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, I've okay. seen this statue. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Could you Whoa. see that? Oh, so, yeah. So that is your Netflix traveling through the fiber optical cable. Wow. Just that we have a water optical cable. So it right kind of gets trapped inside. It and gets just trapped inside. Along. Doesn't yep, leak it's out. It's just zigzagging inside, and that's how your internet gets delivered. It's also what happens if you have a Barocca, but look, that's another <laughs> story for another day. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so that's so. Photons okay. being totally, or waves being okay, just keep totally going. reflected. You've got to come yep. down a little oh, bit. Yep, there, yep. you got come it. Come down a little yep. bit. Don't look See, at it. I'm not quite. looking at it. Uh, yep. Don't cross the beam. Yep, okay, it's coming it's down. beautiful. Coming down. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's All just right. water. Just All water right. with a little just bit water. of dye. No problems okay. here. <laughs> and if you'd let certainly me... didn't set fire to gaffer tape, so that's yeah. a nice change. <laughs> okay. All right. All and right, then, all right. One last Most experiment one last to dazzle. Experiment. Yep, oh, to dazzle. Okay. To dazzle. So this right. is a diffraction grating, just need like the what you were. down a bit because I, I don't think we can really see. There we go. Okay, yep. Okay, Great. so this is just me really splitting that light from this laser beam, letting it pass through many, many slits oh. and creating these patterns. Right. So that's not science, that's just pretty disco for it's quantum It's pretty physics. disco, but yeah. it, it really comes from some hard science. Okay, good. The wavy kind. <laughs> the wavy hard kind of science. So science is, light is waves. Yes. Light is particles. Light can behave like both at the same time. Yep. It's freaking weird, but it's the fundamental thing that you work on and hopefully will help our quantum computers in yes, the future. Yes, exactly. And quantum communications. And exciting. Yeah. It's the most important bit. It's, it's pretty totally and exciting. It's totally exciting. Are you ready to go back to dropping bowling balls and learning a bit more about the big scale. For as long as I'm not on the way I of totally the bowling agree with ball. That, yeah. Let's leave the quantum realm and Hello. go out to the giant astrophysical realm of gravity. And the best person to take us there is Tamara Tamar. Davis. Tam, okay. come on in. Back to the big scale of things again. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So we've gone from the from the quantum and the, the laws of physics that work here on Earth are the same as those that work out in space. And the gravity that is made the bowling ball swing back and forth uh, along the ground here is the same gravity that keeps the planets in their orbits. And so I was going to give us a little bit of an exploration of some of the solar system. Unfortunately, I, we can't go outside and look at that in great detail, but Damn we've it. had some people and some spacecraft go out into the solar system to have a look and so if we go and have a look at this picture yeah hopefully this is a nice familiar picture pretty familiar this one's a picture of earth obviously it is a picture of earth um but it's good can, side but yeah but you can see actually a really cool thing that the if you this is was taken by the apollo astronauts from the moon yeah and so you can see earth sort of rising and it's got the light shining on one side of it. So the sun's like above in this thing. It's shining on the top part of the earth. And you can see the shadow of nighttime yeah. on the dark side of the earth. So it's good to think like when you go outside of the planet and look back, you see the phases, like we see the phases of the yeah. moon. Yeah. So from the moon, the earth has phases. Yeah. Like waxing. So I wonder what if they celebrate when there's a full earth. Yeah. yeah. So you'll have a full Maybe earth yeah. and you'll, and sometimes you'll have a crescent earth and that kind of thing. So this is a, like a really fun picture. And it was actually a really change of perspective the first time humans went outside yeah. of the Astronauts planet. Astronauts talk about that, like this overwhelming sense of realising how small we are in this yeah. Huge expanse. And you understand how important like conservation of this little precious mm. planet is. Um, but if we step slightly further away, I have another picture of Earth for you. Let's have a look at this one. 
Uh, I'm no astrophysicist, but I can tell you that is not Earth. Well, it, may, uh, it may not look <laughs> like the Earth that you're used to, but that's because Saturn's in the way. Right. <laughs> if you look really closely, there's a dot in sort of the top left. If there's an arrow that can point to that, that's right. us. That's a picture of the Earth. You're really testing my faith. Yeah, here. Yeah. I, oh, actually, no, I can see a tiny little yeah. blue dot. You're right. That's us. Yeah, that's a picture <laughs> taken by the Cassini spacecraft. Wow. Out, um, when it looked back, it was out beyond Saturn, it looked back, and you can see Earth through Saturn rings. That must have been amazing because to line yeah. up the two planets when there's yeah. all this ridiculous vastness of space. Yeah. yeah, so I think this is a really cool picture and it just gives you sort of a little bit of a sense of just how small the planets are compared yeah. to the spaces between them mm. and how vast space might be. But it's hard to tell there because obviously there's a long way between. So have yeah. we got a way of comparing the size of Earth with Yes. Saturn more realistically. Yeah, so if we go to the next one, we've got a picture of Saturn's rings. And this is like a sort of a close-up. This, this um, is the Cassini division. It's a famous sort of dark patch in Saturn's rings. And you can see that there's lots of little gaps and stuff. And this is like we made a scale model of Earth. <laughs> that you just dropped into Cassini's rings. how yeah. that would compare. So if you look at um, Australia, Australia is just a bit under 5,000 kilometres wide. And yep. that's um, the same width as that Perfect. sort of little gap in So we the truly Saturn are rings. tiny compared to Saturn. Yeah. So yep. the gas giants, Saturn, Jupiter and stuff are huge compared to Earth. Don't answer of that on your tests it's not got saturn jupiter and stuff it's also like <laughs> neptune and things okay yeah. so Gene. yeah get it right yeah. <laughs> um and so if but we have even more distant there's only really one more distant picture that it, we see commonly that was taken if we go to the next one this is as far away of a picture oh sorry i forgot about this one this is like um a detail of the rings of saturn and you can see these sort of like you can see that there's shadows happening here. Oh, yeah. and there's it looks like, like an ice shelf. Yeah, so there's like bits sticking up. They're a couple of kilometres high and they're, um, and they're casting shadows on the rest of the, the rings. It's really cool what you can see with some of these spacecrafts yeah. that we've put out into space. But now let's move on to the next one, which is the most distant picture of Earth ever taken. You can see these sort of beams across the image, which are just actually sort of like su sunlight coming in the edge of the camera. Like right, sometimes okay, you know, when yeah. you take a photo and yeah. you get sort my of photos those are always bad. Don't sort worry. Sort of weird yeah. effects just yeah. because of the optics of the camera. Yeah. Um, but it, there's a little tiny arrow that will show you where <laughs> Earth is. <laughs> Can you see us? Yeah, I don't think they're very professional photographers <laughs> who are really capturing Earth here in these shots. It's like, oh. yeah, we need a, an arrow every time. Yeah, so this is taken from Voyager, which is spa a spacecraft that's gone further than anything else. It's left our solar system. Out of our solar system. Oh. Now, Tam, I'm very impressed with these photos, but what's gravity got to do with all of this? Ah, so gravity is the thing. So we're watching gravity. Um, uh, we don't need a picture to describe this. This is, we're watching these these planets, that all the planets that we've been passing here, yeah. Saturn and everything like that, they're all orbiting the sun and they have a sort of a kinetic energy that um, is, because they're kinetic moving, energy, yep. uh, related to their potential energy. They mostly stay at the same potential because they all stay about the same distance from the sun. Right. Um, but something like a comet or something will cut, comes close to the sun sometimes and further away other times. It's on an elliptical orbit, like an oval. Yep. And so when it's close to us, it's moving fast because it's got it's taken a lot of potential energy from being far away, falling towards the sun. I saw the slingshot the effect in Star Trek IV, Return to Earth. <laughs> ah, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm totally across you it. You can use yeah. that to propel, um, propel yeah. your uh, image, your um, spacecraft, spacecraft yep. and stuff, as like get get them sped up yeah. as they go around a planet or something right. like that. A gravity assist, it's called. Okay. Um, and so. Uh, and there's like a really cool thing with astronauts as they're falling towards the Earth. Well, you know, you see astronauts in their space capsule. Yeah, they're just floating. They're just floating, right? You think that they off, have no, pushing. they have no gravity. Yeah. They're, but they're not in no gravity. They're actually in the Earth's gravitational field. Um, and in the Earth, they're falling towards the Earth, just like a skydiver is falling towards the Earth. But they just happen to be falling towards the Earth at the same time that they're moving sideways. And they're moving sideways fast enough that they just keep missing Earth. So they're just perfectly falling away yeah. from Earth at the same... So all an orbit is, is falling towards the Earth and missing. And missing it. Um, <laughs> and also missing out on this bit that you yeah, get from yeah. skydiving. Very similarly, unattractive. The Earth is falling towards the Sun. Yeah. But we're moving wow. sideways at just the right speed so that we just keep missing it and stay the same distance away. So it all comes down to gravity. Yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. Gravity. That's pretty impressive. Yeah.
And then we've got other photos that, like, you may be familiar with the beautiful Milky Way yep. that we can that we can see in the sky. That's the um, the disk of stars. That's our galaxy. Yeah. And if we go to the next photo, this one's of Andromeda. This is what our galaxy, the Milky Way, might look like if yeah. we were to go outside of the galaxy and look back. So beautiful. We have this sort of disk of stars and we're just usually embedded inside it looking out. And it's gravity again that holds that mm -hmm. galaxy together. And the gravity from, I know your favourite things, supermassive black holes, one of your yeah. top ten favourite things, yep. in the centre mm -hmm. really driving exactly. it all. Exactly. In the centre of most galaxies you'll have a supermassive black hole. Um, and then if you zoom out even further, you go out into a picture of like the... Um, many, many galaxies. If you look at the entire universe, it's full of uh, hundreds of billions of galaxies. And so I if think we go to the next of image that of that, well. yeah. yeah, so basically every dot that you see here, even the tiny little ones in the background, they're not stars. Each individual dot has hundreds of billions of stars in them. So every single thing there yeah. is a galaxy. Almost every single thing. Almost There's like every two single stars. Thing. If you see something with a crosshair in it, like with a sort of a, a, a plus sign. I see sign. one sort of in the middle, in down the middle, a bit on down the, down right, the yeah, right, under that bright yellow. Yeah. Or oh, wow. Yeah, those are those are some stars in the foreground, and everything else is galaxies in the background. So, does your job just make you feel like we are so insignificant every day of the week? <laughs> well, sort of, because there's a there's an interesting thing. Like, I'm as tiny compared to a galaxy as I am large compared to the nucleus of an atom. Yeah. So that means we're about Goldilocks size. Right. I would say. Okay. So we're <laughs> big enough that. to be able to do yep. stuff and yep. small enough to be able to admire the universe. Yeah. Um, but, like, if you look out, the, we, the fact that we understand all of this stuff about the universe, I don't think that should make us feel small and insignificant. No. It should make us sort of feel a bit powerful, like yeah. excited about how much we, we know. But also, given the amount of empty space that you see here, it also should give you a really strong feeling of just how precious... Our Earth is, and how every much we have to bit look after of life it. on our planet. Yep, yeah, totally. I love it. Okay, but so I've... speaking of the Earth, yeah, let's come back down to Earth. Yeah, <laughs> and we've got the air here, right? Yep. And with, that's the last, very last experiment that I think we should do is something to do with the that's weight of the air. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh yes. Dr. Rob, taking so, off his funky glasses. Yeah. Did you know that there's like, if you think about it, um, there's a lot of gas, a lot yep. of air sitting down and it's actually held to earth by by gravity and yeah. that's the the atmosphere and the atmosphere is actually pretty heavy there's a lot of stuff out there it doesn't feel like that heavy pushing down on your arm mm. um but like you know i can i can yeah. lift it up there's like but this would if there but this would be like lifting up um several people on your arms if you were lifting up the air of the um, okay tam i think you've been drinking the physics water <laughs> I do not feel several people's worth of weight when I lift up my arms. That's because pressure works in all directions. So the pressure of the air is pushing up on you at <gasps> the same time as the pressure of the air is pushing down ah. on you. And so you can get, you can have, like, the air is pushing on all sides, which right. means it's it's like when you swim underwater. Yeah. You've got, like, if you carry a bucket of water, yeah. the water's heavy, but if you go underneath it, you can sort of float around inside yeah, it right. and move up and down. Because it's coming at you from every direction, yeah. supporting yeah. and pushing. Whereas if I was just lying on the ground with a metre of water above me, I wouldn't be a very happy person. No. <laughs> but I can be a metre <laughs> underwater, and yeah. that's fine. I love that explanation. All right, yeah. And I think there's a bit of water happening yeah. here as well. Okay, let's go over here because this is the next most exciting part and we've got, we might need to bring a couple of volunteers back. Yeah. All right, so Excellent. we've got a couple of volunteers and our volunteers are... Rory. Rory. And Jack. Rory, and where are you guys from? Uh, TSS, the Southport School. Yep. TSS, all right. Do you want to give a little shout out to TSS while we're... The red light. The red light, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Fantastic. So, are you? Uh, oh, you've got to put your I'm special gonna give goggles you safety on. Safety first. I'm going to give you some special goggles. And I'm seeing a boiling fuel container, so I think yeah. we should move the hell away from here. Let's yeah. <laughs> come on through. So, just to reassure you, um, <laughs> Bernie, that this is not. It says fuel on the outside. Yep. This is not actually a fuel container. False advertising. Big this fan. This is a brand new <laughs> container that has never had fuel in it. Yep. 
at the moment it just has a bit of water. Okay, so maybe I over scared you and we don't yeah. have to be that far away. <laughs> so it's currently boiling away and what we're going to do is but when something gets hot, it sort of the pressure would usually increase. Yep. And so it pushes outwards. And so what the by heating it up, it's like, you know, when you see the steam coming off yep. your your pan, seeing it's like it right there. Yeah, yep. we can see some steam coming out. It's like the the vapor sort of escaping because it's really really hot and lots and, of energy. Yeah, yeah, lots moving of energy fast. that's pushing out. Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to soon we're going to close this off. We're going to chuck ice water on it. Right. So we're going to close it off so that, that no nothing get in or out anymore. Uh, we're going to then take away the pressure that's on the inside by uh, by cooling it down. Okay. So when you cool something down, it will it will take away this pressure that's coming from the heat. Okay. And then. With any we'll luck, see what the atmosphere might crush the can. Okay, all right. <laughs> that's going to work? I don't know. Positions, <laughs> positions everyone. Okay, all right. So I'll stay here in the safety guys zone. To each, do you want to come around here? Get around the front. I'll and you grab this one here. And I'll just keep yeah. my phone handy yep. for ringing one. next of kin. Yep. Do you want to chuck a tiny bit of water <laughs> in to start bit, with? Uh, turn that off for you if you like. There and Check out those safety gloves, yep. Tam. They're very impressive. Okay, so Press get that on tight. super tight. Okay. And then we're going to take this. Mince. Feeling confident in physics, Put boys? Put this in here. Mint cooling, boys. <laughs> Mint cooling. Pour some ice water on it. Whoa! <laughs> well, that was rapid. That's okay. <laughs> well, that was very effective. Wow. <laughs> nice and cool boring. Cool. Did we get you a little bit wet? <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. that's hot. Uh, but yeah, so you can see that <laughs> that's Impressive. that was what happened big due to the this metal can thanks to the pressure of the atmosphere when before? we took yeah before yeah. <laughs> it lost some weight. <laughs> um, so this is like this is what happens when that there wasn't enough pressure inside the can to push out to balance the pressure pushing down by the um, by the atmosphere. So, so I totally believe you about the seven people on each arm now because there was enough yeah. pressure from the atmosphere to totally squash a can in yeah. every direction. <laughs> Pretty impressive, isn't Fantastic. it? Fantastic. Are you impressed, Rory and Jack? Definitely. Yeah. Totally. Awesome. All right. You're going to go home and um, start performing some dangerous experiments with cans. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't encourage that. Thank you very much. Thanks for your help. That, you did that. That's cooled down beautifully And well. thanks, Dr. Rob. No. You can make a cup of tea thanks. for me anytime. That was expertly boiled. <laughs> All right. Okay. And so was that it for gravity, do we think? That's Dan? it. That's it that's for gravity? It. That is it for gravity. So yep. we have ticked off on. We've gone gravity. We've gone um, light and polarisation and colour encoding and frequency. So we've looked at the very big end of the universe. Physics is very big on the very big end. It's also very big on the very small end. So polarisation and quantum, um, uh, the kinds of things that we can use for quantum computing and information carrying, um, frequency as well. Nice work, plus dung beetles and giant <laughs> wing beakers. Um, and with um, Dr Jacinda, we also learned about the energy in atoms, the different energy energy levels of electrons and how they're related to frequency, colour and, um, and all sorts of encoding things. Plus, maglev, who doesn't love a superconducting <laughs> magnetic flux excluderer? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Rob Bell, get on over here. What was your favourite moment of today? Um, probably yeah, I know, those. keeping those glasses. <laughs> you know what my favourite moment was? Everything to do with our volunteers. So I want all of our volunteers Ooh. to come up here. And Ben. Yeah, and ben, ben, yes, Ben, our secret support guy who uh, brought all this gear and skipped the tutorial here at the <laughs> Uni of Queensland. Um, what did you, okay, what were your uh, well, uh, the microphones? I can't see through these glasses. Oh. <laughs> You're seeing seven microphones in different colours. Oh, there That's it right. is. Okay, you got it, you got it. Oh, cheers. Oh, what, what stood out for you today? What did you learn or like about physics today? I like the dancing part. Yeah, like <laughs> you dancing. rocked it, and no one's an electron like you are, Shivani. You you are amazing. Did you take? Did you like anything in particular today? Yeah, the super cooling experiment. 
Ah, the magnetic levitation. You might have to talk to Dr. Jacinda about how to become a quantum physicist a little bit later because those Cooper pairs, baby, they are really <laughs> going to get you in and keep you in. What about you, Rory? I really like the crushing cannon pressure experiment. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw a bit of joy. I kind of feel like you'd be a dangerous guy to have around in a lab with matches and stuff as well. I see that little glint in your eye. Yeah. <laughs> how about you, Jack? I kind of have to agree with Rory. Yeah. It was pretty fun. Yeah. I also really liked the, the fire one. The yeah, yeah. <laughs> wasn't that amazing seeing the waves come along with the sound because of the pressure? I forgot about that. That was brilliant. Thanks so much. And Ben, what was your favourite part of today? <laughs> I've got to say the, uh, the multicoloured fire always reminds me of Harry Potter. Very cool. <laughs> OK, we've got everything. We've been to the universe and beyond. We've been down to atoms and quantum parts and we've had a Harry Potter reference. Like, we are <laughs> killing it here today with physics. It's been so great to have all of your company here today and we're wishing you the absolute best from the World Science Festival Brisbane 2022. Don't forget, if you missed the biology or the chemistry shows, they are online right now and you can go back and look at them. They were super fun as well and you might see some of the same ideas but talked about in a different way with living things and, and other chemical reactions. It has been an absolute blast. Please, please let's hope there's no floods, pandemics, fires whatever next year and we can see you here in person. So thank you so much for the great time you helped us to have today. We'll be sending those uh, pretty specky glasses out to you so everyone can look as cool as Dr Rob well, in the future. I can try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks so much from us here at the World Science Fair Festival Brisbane, say goodbye everyone. Bye. Thank our physicists, thank our students and helpers and see you all next year hopefully. Bye. Bye. Bye.